Virtual to real. Nissan presents GT Academy Race to Dubai. Over the next few months, a selection of Nissan's youngest drivers will be training for one of the world's toughest endurance races, the Dubai 24 Hours. We follow their highs and their lows as they attempt to make the grade in the world of professional motorsport. But unlike your average racing driver, there's one thing that makes these guys unique. They've all learned their craft on a PlayStation. This is the race to Dubai. Well, since 2008, GT Academy has been turning PlayStation gamers into racing drivers. Now that I reach a little part of my dream, I just want to keep pushing and achieve bigger goals and bigger dreams. For me, it's one chance, only this chance, and I want to take it. The whole experience in GT Academy was very fantastic. For me, it's like uh, they put me out of my normal life and throw me into a dream. There are three other graduates that have emerged from the program. 2008 GT Academy winner Lucas Ordinez, 2010 GT Academy winner Jordan Tresson, and the winner in 2011, Jan Mardenborough. Well, since winning, all of them have gone on to realize their dreams and enjoy successful racing careers. Jordan is driving with the Team Signatech, competing in the LMP2 class in the World Endurance Championship, and Jan Mardenborough has earned his place in the British Racing Drivers Club and has been racing with RJ and Motorsports in the British GT3 Championship. Lucas Ordonez has also been driving LMP2 with Greaves Motorsport. When I won GT Academy, I was only thinking uh, on Dubai 24 hours. You know, I was thinking, OK, Lucas, you have to push and to make a racing career. It's, it's crazy if you look back and, and, and what I've done in, in these four years. So I'm really proud. After GT Academy, Lucas moved on to race in the GT4 European Cup, where he came second overall, and from there quickly moved up to competing in the LMP2 with Team Signatech. And they enjoyed a second place in the podium in the most prestigious endurance race of them all, the Le Mans 24 hours. When Lucas first came in, no one knew what to expect. Lucas didn't know how far he could go. I remember with a little bit of dread what we did with Lucas. He literally got 10 laps in the car he was going to race in Dubai, and then he went to Dubai, and he exceeded all of our expectations. So from one crazy Spanish guy to, um, you know, a worldwide program. Here we are in uh, Road Atlanta, Petit Le Mans uh, race here in Georgia, America. I'm going to, to compete in the Delta Wing, a uh, very exciting and innovative car. And the concept designer Ben Barry joins Lucas in Atlanta with the Delta Wing. The car does have a very significant difference. We moved the weight distribution rearwards. That meant that the braking happens behind the central gravity and in front. That's unique. There's no other racing car here that's doing that. Everybody here around the paddock asked me, how is that weird thing uh, works? Is, this, is, this, is that really turns? And I said, it really turns well. At high speed corners, the car is, is unbelievable. But this is real innovation on the racetrack. Lucas teammate Gunnar Yanet takes the Delta Wing into the track or onto it uh, for the first practice session. And everybody at Road Atlanta is eager to see exactly what it can do. We had a really good start of the, the session. We set a really good lap time, 13.6, which put us uh, third in, in, in the LMP2 class. Everything was fine, and, and then suddenly uh, one of the mechanics was pointing to, 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 the, to the bridge. Was 
behind a, uh, a GTC car and go to pass him up underneath the bridge. And as I pull past, just immediate hard impact, turns the car immediately, and, and now I'm, I'm going over end. And uh, yeah, at that point, I put my head down and closed my eyes and felt the car bounce a couple times. You know, the, the immediate feeling is, oh crap, we have to do the race. Well, under Petit Le Mans rules, the car must complete mandatory night qualifying. The team have only 24 hours until the session begins, and even less time to put the Delta Wing back together. No qualifying, remember, means no racing. We have a, a, a fantastic crew, so they are rebuilding her, and she will be alive again. The 2012 GT Academy winners are coming to the end of their development program. They've improved on and off the track and now enter the final preparations for the Dubai 24 hours. Mentors Bob Jenkinson and Kristen Van have brought them to Silverstone for a specially designed training session. Good morning, guys. Uh, we're getting towards the end of your training program, only two more training sessions here at Silverstone. We've been very impressed with how you've improved. However, one thing that we haven't seen is how you drive when you're fatigued. So we're gonna to make today's training session slightly more difficult. Before you drive today, you're gonna to have to run one lap of the perimeter here at Silverstone. But then when you get back, straight into the car, and we're gonna see you drive 10 laps with the same speed and consistency that we know you have. Are you up for the challenge? Yeah. Mark, you're going first. Get your training kit on. Normally when they turn up for the training sessions here, they just turn up and simply drive the car and, and improve uh, their driving. But with, with the, the running, they weren't so keen, but it's, it's important that, the, that they push themselves. I'd rather work them hard now and have an easier time in Dubai uh, as opposed to going to Dubai with the guys not being fully prepared. Having raced in Dubai, the 2011 GT Academy winner Jan Mardenberg knows exactly how physically and mentally demanding it is, so it's come along to encourage the boys. Preparation is key, really. You have to prepare yourself a lot mentally and physically before going out there. When we started to run, I ran very fast, first section, and we ran with Christian. Christian says it's very fast and for, for me. Today was a little bit a uh, surprising PTU. Uh, they tried to, to see our consistency when we are uh, tired. Well, after running six kilometers around the Silverstone circuit, the boys jump in the car to complete an hour around the track. It was a cool exercise and I was really happy with that. Uh, at the beginning of the GT Academy, I was not so fit in long running. I was a sprinter before. If you manage to do uh, that session uh, good, a few times, I think uh, it means you're ready for, for Dubai. Some muscles on the legs, a little bit pain, but I think it's very useful. We don't have uh, a lot of time now, and uh, that kind of stuff prepares quite well, so yes, it's uh, very useful, I think, to do uh, that. We fully expected this to be one of the hardest tests they, they would have to, to do, but a, a worthwhile one. They all have exceeded my expectation, and every single one of them stepped up to the mark. I think they've proven to us that they're more than prepared and ready for Dubai now. Well, the hard work is to enable the boys to reach their goal and to race the 24 hours of Dubai, and soon team principal Bob and Neville will decide who joins them and who races alongside the first Academy GT graduate, Lucas Ordinez. Lucas is at Road Atlanta, don't forget, with his new team racing the inner to De Delta wing. And for the first time, yes, but a big crash in the first practice session has hindered their chance of racing. The team works all night on the car to get it back and on track. It's a very special moment for us to, to hear the, the engine running after uh, such a big crash. We're going to run the night practice, which is mandatory for, for the drivers, so Gunnar and me have to do at least three, three laps each in, in the night. So, yeah, all looks good. Well, after a successful night qualifying session for the Delta Wing, they secure a place on the grid. Lucas has come along a long way since his gaming days, that's for sure. 
from GT Academy keeps surprising people. Everyone thought at the beginning it was just a computer gaming thing where we would find a driver and then find another driver. No, we were trying to find professional racing drivers. Lucas now is a professional racing driver. He's fast, he's safe. As you can see in the background, the fans love him, especially when he's dressed like Batman. It's amazing, no? As always here in the US, uh, all the crowd can, can come to the starting grid and, you know, it's, it's, it's fantastic. We've only got one target today and that's to finish the race. There's going to be lots and lots and lots of cars that don't finish, so we just need to stay safe and get to the end of the race. It's going to be tough. We are only two drivers. And, uh, we have to be, you know, focused and, and ready to, to not make any mistake. This is a 10-hour race at Road Atlanta, and the Delta Wing is unclassified. This is a test race, don't forget. Not a competitive one for them, so the car has to start at the back of the grid. Gunnar Jeanette takes the first stint. Running like clockwork, the drivers are doing a fantastic job. We've seen lots of incidents out there. Our boys have avoided incidents, which is exactly what we need them to do. Tires are fantastic, we can triple stint, and we're getting around 35 laps. We started at the back of the grid. Last time I looked, we were fifth. One thing is for certain, everyone will take notice of this performance. When I jump out of the car, uh, you know, the team was telling me I, I, I left the car in P3 overall, so it was a great performance, overtaking LMP2 guys. So happy with my pace. The car felt really amazing in this track. Gunnar is finishing his uh, last run, and then I'll go in for until the end of the, of the race. So night driving for me, but in this race, anything can happen, and it's very dangerous, so lots of traffic. Both Delta Wing drivers are doing well as they head into the night. Lucas does most of the driving and he finishes the race. Amazing, no? After a year ago of work, lots of people working really hard. We made it, no? It's a fantastic feeling. It's extraordinary. The car did not miss a beat, not one single thing. The, the whole team performed absolutely flawlessly. Our pit stops were great and the result shows. I, I don't think I've ever been so ecstatic with a sixth place in my life. This was genuinely a victory for innovation, for the team, and for a great job. And if you look at the car, there's not one mark on it. The first race, uh, the car finished. I think uh, all the motorsport world will remember this, this day. Driving with Lucas was an absolute pleasure, and I hope he had half as much fun as I did. Happy with my performance, with the pace we've got. And we show that the, the car is fast and reliable, so uh, I think he's job done. The Delta Wing finished sixth in the race and extended everyone's, uh, exceeded everyone's expectations. GT Academy graduate Lucas Ordinez, his racing career is advancing quickly. A fantastic finish to another successful season. Coming up next on the race to Dubai, the 2012 GT Academy winners are put to the test as they compete in a night race. From virtual to real, Nissan presents GT Academy Race to Dubai.